Morning, everyone. Okay, we have been talking about um, me and a, me and CC are here, and we're talking about um, God not being in all of their thoughts. So I just happened to look up a scripture. Now I don't know if this is the one she was referring to, but um, Psalm ten four. It says, "The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God, and God is not in all his thoughts." His ways are always grievous, and the Lord's judgments are far above out of his sight. And as for his enemies, he puffs at them. Now, the way I see that is you puff at your enemies. That, that's, there's, no, there's no authority in a puff. He just, ah, okay, so I broke your nose and I sent you to the hospital. Puff, sorry about that. I'll try better tomorrow. And he says in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. He lies to himself, he lies to others, and under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret place does he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily against the poor. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den, and he lies in wait to catch the poor. And you know what? The word is full of the word aha, A-A-H-A, -A -A, aha. And when I was living with Linda, she would always, I, I was always watching to take her down. And I had the spirit of aha on me. And I was like this Psalm says, where I, saw, I sat in the lurking places. I was always watching her. And when she messed up, I'd go aha, uh-huh, aha. And then I would take that little thing I saw her do wrong and not talk to her about it, not ask her what she was thinking, not try and help her, but I'd put it in my back pocket. And whenever I'd get corrected, I'd pull out my little aha card and say, yeah, well, I don't have to listen to what you say because aha, I have this thing. And that's the way I lived my life. It says, he crouches himself that the poor may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God's not, God's forgotten. He's not watching. He hides his face. He'll never see it. But you know what? I didn't read the rest of this, but um, thou shalt see. But my, so I won't read it anymore because that pretty much sums up what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, and I thought of the scripture earlier that says, um, if we say we if we say we see, we don't see. And Cece has oftentimes said to me, Deb, maybe you don't see this. Just, just hang on, let me finish what I'm saying because maybe you don't see what I'm trying to say. Maybe you can't see the spirit that you're puffing at and not actually able to rebuke it and bind it because you don't really see it. So you're just throwing out a puff and it's not scared of the puff. And, and the puff is a lack of the authority of Jesus. And we don't have the authority of Jesus because we're not really understanding the spirit behind what we're doing. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that today because um, as we're talking about him not being in all our thoughts, I started reading that scripture and I started realizing how I used to live with the whole aha ministry, lying in wait to, to uh, cast someone else down but only puffing at my enemies. So, there you go. so we were talking about the crimes of the heart, the thoughts, because it's really pretty deep and you can see it again, the solution and the problem can all be seen in the life of King David. God was not in all of his thoughts. He didn't go to war. He committed a murder. He committed adultery. He affected a bunch of people's lives negatively. And then he was lying to himself, so he just became treacherous in battle. He became really, really evil in the way he was doing battle with people because he was a vexed soul. He'd already done a lot of evil because in the spirit of his mind and his selfishness, selfishness is the root of all evil. It's where everything happens. It's where everything pr plays out. That's why when we live to please ourselves and we haven't really judged our life by our experiment, um, it all goes south from there. So I'm gonna give you the recipe out of it. It's in Psalm 51. Against you, 
and you alone have I sinned and done evil in your sight. What does God see? God sees our thoughts. Even in, again, Proverbs 24, 12, don't you know that I know what you're thinking and I'm going to reward you according to what you do about what you think. So you want to lay up treasures in heaven? You can travel through life with God in your thoughts, but until people get to the place where they really have a broken and contrite heart, because, uh, and I'm going to leave a link to something Gene did a, a few years ago called Judge Your Life by Your Experience. We have a, a Facebook page called New Life Messengers Real Life Stories. And I'm going to leave some links there. One of them was judge your life by your experience. If you don't do that, you'll travel around the same mountain over and over. Because David realized he'd, he'd, he'd done, God only knows how many lives. He affected thousands of lives because of his selfish Beck soul. And again, we can only take people down. If you're, you know, smokers came into my life. Drug addicts came into my life. Sex addicts came into my life. What did they do? They took me down. I was willing to follow. Because whatever you're not doing right in your own conscience, you'll be an evangelist of. None of us can help that. We have to find people to party with. Every good drunk, need, every good woman feeling sorry for herself, every selfish woman needs some other selfish woman to sign off on her selfish one. And so we were actually even talking about that movie. What's the name of it? The Razor's Edge. Yeah. Watch The Razor's Edge. It's, it's very insightful. Yeah. Go ahead. And so I had one other thing to say. So I lived that life. Why was I living that life? I was living that life because the, the aha to Linda, the aha, I caught you doing something, aha. The reason I was living that life and being that way with her was because I had secrets. I had secrets I was keeping. I had, I had secret agenda for my life that I was that I was after and she was she would get in the way. And so she would correct me and I would do the aha thing, but I was always on a mission to cast her down so that I could live my secret life. So Once I started not living a secret and when life did that anymore, happen? just just aha mention a little away. just man, well, mention a little about I'll turning tell you the when corner. What happened when I turned the corner was when one day I was talking to someone on the phone and they were crying so hard about how I had hurt them, I couldn't even understand what they were saying. And I realized at that moment how much I had hurt people. And then I got an email from a young woman that said, of all the people who've left the ministry, because I had left the ministry, and of all the people who've left the ministry, I was the saddest when you left. And when I read that email, I realized again that I didn't even know she really paid attention to me. She was young. She was probably, you know, she was in her early 20s or something when I left. And I never, and, and I had known her and grown up with her all you her life. You came back and lived with her. Yeah. I, and, I had, and I had known her all my life, but I didn't really realize that I was really a part of her life. You don't realize when because you're selfish how you affect anybody, right? That's 100%. And so when I, when... That instance, and then the person on the phone that was crying, I realized, man, I have so hurt people. So you know what I spent? Okay, I lived in another state, and I spent the next 18 months. I knew I was going to come back to the ministry. I just didn't know when. And for the next 18 months, I was saying I was sorry to all kinds of people. I lived in my hometown, and the Lord was sending people to me from way back when I was 12 years old. I was repenting, I was saying I was sorry to so many people. Even my ex-mother-in-law, she came in and you know, she, she heard I was in town, um, I was working at Walmart, she came in to say hi to me and I had the opportunity at that moment to say, you know, there have been times where I treated you really treacherously and I took that opportunity and I never saw her again and she has since passed away. So. The way my, the reason my life changed was because I started seeing how I affected people and how I hurt people. And I'm not perfect yet. I still have to look at how I affect people and how I hurt people. It's always ongoing. But Jesus, I touched the hem of Jesus' garment to the point that now I know he can help me out of that. A broken and yes. contrite spirit I won't despise. And that's yes. what I realized living to please me has been a total disaster, a nightmare, yes. and a horror show.
Yes. So maybe I should try living to please the Lord instead. And I would always go up for altar calls. We'd be at these jumps and Jean, you know, all that I am, all that I ever be. I would say it, but you know what I was doing? I was puffing at it. I was puffing. I, I had no authority to say it with conviction. Once saved, always saved. I was puffing. Yeah. And you know what? Now when I speak to the spirits that trouble me, I don't puff at them. I use the authority and the power of Jesus Christ because I can tap into it now because he helps me on every turn because I try not to hurt people. Yeah, I was reading this scripture. I'll just end it with this too. If you ever read the interaction that Jesus had with the demons called Legion that were tormenting a person and he threw them into the pigs, it shows how easy it is to puff at demons. Yeah. You can rebuke them in the spirit of your mind, too. And, you know, with all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. We don't have to live in the congregation of the dead with no understanding. There's all kinds of jewels and gold, like apples of gold and pitchers of silver. Yep. Is the wisdom of God. And that was Psalm 4, by the way. Don't be, don't be the person in Psalm 4. Yeah, go for the riches of God. <laughs> the riches of the world. Or nothing burgers. And I was the person in Psalm 4 and proof that you don't have to be the person in <laughs> Psalm 4 stay there. for all eternity. And then, you know, <laughs> life gets exciting when you're, I spy the, the devil and you're willing to, That's right. you know, realize he's just a puff of smoke. You can rebuke. That's right. Amen.